I work with Eamon Holmes and seeing his mobility improve is lovely. Eamon Holmes' friend and not just travel colleague Haley Sparks spoke to Yahoo about their friendship. Eamon Holmes has recently teamed up with longtime friend Haley Sparks to the host Not Just Travel podcast. As well as hosting the show together, they film travel segments on trips together. Former This Morning beauty expert Sparks spoke exclusively to Yahoo about her friendship with Holmes and working together on the travel podcast, where they discuss the hottest destinations across the globe with the industry experts. Eamon Holmes is like my TV dad. He will send me a lovely message if I've achieved something to say, seeing you do such a brilliant job, you so deserve it, I'm pleased for you. We get on really well as friends. Eamon and myself have got another trip coming up in September with our podcast Not Just Travel. We've got a Mediterranean trip where we film travel segments together and also present the podcast. It's with Virgin Voyages and we will go to Corsica, Rome, Ibiza, Cannes, it's a really nice itinerary so every day is different which is just lovely. That particular trip is for a week but when we go away and film it can be anywhere between 5 and 8 days. Obviously Eamon is overcoming his challenges with his mobility and that was a little bit of a concern for him. As friends and as a team, we completely can accommodate Eamon's needs. Once he's in front of that camera, you'd never know that he was struggling. Although it's slow, it's been really lovely for me to witness the progress that he is making. We had our first photograph with him able to stand up for the photo the other day. What I love about it is Eamon is so open about those challenges and there are so many other people that are either permanently or temporarily wheelchair bound. When we film or do the interviews, Eamon really brings that in to find out for people that might be going on a cruise or they might be going to one of these places around the world. How does that company cater for holidaymakers with similar issues, or he'll do a review of the cabin and make sure that it's fully accessible. Eamon really does focus on that because he's got a deep appreciation for how important it is to find out that people traveling with any restrictions or concerns have that full support and that their holiday experience is maximized by great cabins, great staff and great support so that holidaymakers can have the best possible holiday without the frustrations or restrictions. I love the fact that he's so willing to use his platform to help other people and encourage them to travel as well. Eamon brings so much to the table on not just travel. All his interview experience, his humor, he has a genuine passion for travel and he's very inquisitive as well. I'm in awe of him, the way that he is with people on the podcast and he's just so brilliant with everyone. He gets stopped absolutely everywhere we go. Honestly, he's the king of the selfie. He's always got time for every single person he interacts with. He'll film a video for their mom. He makes everybody feel special but he finds it a real honor if anyone wants to talk to him. Hats off to him for having the time to do that. If we're working, we go for a nice lunch or something like that. We just get on so well and I've got so much time for him. We'd definitely be doing more travel together. Hopefully we're going to be going to one of Sandal's Caribbean resorts to work with them. Eamon gets on really well with my fiancé Ben and he's coming to my wedding in October at Headingham Castle. It's really beautiful, a privately owned wedding venue with a castle and beautiful grounds and stately home and a big marquee for the evening. Ben and I have been together for three years. Eamon's been round and he always asks me, how's lovely Ben? He's really happy for me that I've met such a great guy and Ben's truly supportive. I absolutely love working for not just travel. Whether it be celebrities or tourist boards, we work with the biggest names in the travel industry. After every episode, I just come away from the podcast and think, I need to book a flight, I'm very, very lucky that I get to travel all year round. I always love any aspect of presenting but this is my dream job. Travel presenting was always the long-term goal. I feel like I'm in my absolute element when I'm involved in travel presenting, it's my true passion. I had a serious health condition life-threatening bowel disease ulcerative colitis, when I was a child. I missed out on a lot of life because I was so ill, I didn't used to be able to leave the house sometimes, let alone get on a flight. Now I feel like I'm in such a privileged position where I get to make up the lost time. It almost feels like I've lived two completely separate lives. It's hard to believe, really. I think I forget sometimes just how bad it was for me. It's just all to do with quality of life, isn't it? I was constantly in the toilet, I couldn't eat anything, I was in and out of hospital, on loads of drugs. I just couldn't do the everyday things like people take for granted like being able to leave the house or go on a journey because of the constant need for the toilet. At 14, I had a life-saving surgery and then two additional reconstructive surgeries. I'm so blessed that now, 
I just live a completely normal life and I get to do all the things I've missed out on. Because of what happened, I've got an even deeper appreciation for seeing the world. Time is so limited and I learned that so young, it drives me to encourage other people to travel. Right at the start of my career, I was one of this morning's beauty experts. That was just incredible because that's how I met Eamon. There's so many big names, Rylan and Stephen Mulhern, and just so many people that I got to work alongside who gave me so much support, advice and encouragement. You couldn't ask for a better start in the industry than to to go on a show like that and work with the best people in the business. Now I'd love to go back and do travel segments. Eamon really made me understand the importance of being your authentic self on camera and bringing your personality. If you're human, if you show a bit of your true self, people relate to you more. If you're just being a bit corporate and a standard presenter, people don't feel like they really get the gist of you and probably don't relate to you. Davina McCall is the classic example. She's such a household name presenter but she's so authentically herself and her personality just shines through. That's why she's adored. Eamon really made me appreciate that aspect of presenting. Don't try to be a presenter, present as yourself. Now I like to help others with a few little pearls of wisdom of things I've learned along the way. It's nice to be able to see if you can help anyone else or teach them the things that you wish you'd known at the start. Eamon Holmes's latest snap sparks fury as Ruth Langsford fans left raging. Eamon Holmes and Ruth Langsford's dog Maggie recently underwent an operation with both broadcasters updating fans on her health. Eamon Holmes fans have been left divided and fighting amongst themselves after he gave an update on the health of pet pooch Maggie. He took to Instagram to post an old picture of him holding the border collie cross as a puppy for his 800,000 followers. A lot of you wondering about Maggie. She's had an op to remove a growth. All well, not bad for a 14-year-old. In fact she's in better shape than me, he wrote. However his positive post drew a very mixed reaction. At Ruby Rose 1974 commented, she would be, at Ruth Langsford walks her all the time. Maggie is fit little pooch. At Nesdiv 75 agreed with her sentiment as some fans leapt to Eamon's defense writing. It's true though isn't it? Ruth is walking her and looking after her daily, this is what happens when men's heads get turned they forget about their responsibilities and expect the women to pick up the pieces. At Ju 21182 pointed out. Ruth said had op about two weeks ago. They later speculated he no longer sees Maggie in response to another fan writing. And it's a old photo. Don't think he even sees the dog no more even. At Wilson underscore Gale 26 also noticed the shot wasn't a recent one writing. That's an old picture. However at Sylvie Amberville offered support to the broadcaster observing. Lovely photo Eamon. Hope you are okay getting better with your health and just sort the situation out and remember darling. The grass is seldom greener on the other side and sometimes people aren't as genuine as you think and have an agenda. Keep doing your exercises and be happy, xx. Alongside a snap of Maggie sunbathing on a patio, Ruth wrote, she always finds the best sunbathing spot, my little gray-faced girl. Just a few weeks ago, Ruth issued a health update as she shared. Maggie had a little wart removed this morning under sedation so she's feeling a bit sorry for herself this afternoon. Lots of TLC from mummy required. She added, thank you, St. George's Veterinary Center, for looking after our precious girl. Maggie has even appeared on this morning, with her having featured on the show when Ruth and Eamon were hosting. Back in 2016, Maggie joined the former couple on the ITV show and ahead of her being brought into the studio, Ruth told viewers, if we were to split, Eamon and I, who would Maggie choose? She ended up declaring that it was, equal, though Eamon noted he was approached first. Out of control, Eamon Holmes fumes at billions spent on illegal migrants, they shouldn't be here. The conservatives were said to be 6.4 billion pounds over budget on asylum. GB News star Eamon Holmes has raged at soaring levels of illegal immigration in the UK and Labour's hopes of saving billions by cutting the use of migrant hotels. The Conservatives were said to be £6.4 billion over budget on asylum, and Chancellor Rachel Reeves was highly critical of their efforts yesterday in the Commons. Speaking on the People's Channel, Eamon blasted Labour and questioned how they aim to set about cracking down on illegal migration. Rachel Reeves says she is scrapping the Rwanda deportation scheme and cracking down on the use of migrant hotels, he said. That will save £8 billion. Pounds, pounds. So what are we doing now? Are we sitting now saying, let's keep getting these migrants in, we'll pay for it somewhere? When is someone going to stand up and say, this is out of control, 
we can't solve the world's problems. It's unbelievable we are forced to spend all this money on people who shouldn't be here. Allowing tens of thousands of people to claim asylum and scrapping the Rwanda scheme could save £800 million this year and £1.4 billion next year, according to the Treasury. Reeves said, the Illegal Migration Act, passed by the previous government, made it impossible to process asylum applications and remove those with no right to be here. Instead, they relied on a doomed policy to send asylum seekers to Rwanda on planes that never took off, leaving tens of thousands of people stuck in hotels on the public purse. We need a properly controlled and managed asylum system where rules are enforced so that those with no right to be here are swiftly removed. So we have scrapped the Rwanda scheme which placed huge pressure on the Home Office budget. To bring down these costs as soon as possible, my right honorable friend the Home Secretary has already laid legislation to remove the retrospective elements of the Illegal Migration Act, which will significantly reduce the use of hotel accommodation. These measures will save nearly £800 million this year and avoid costs spiraling even further next year's. Home Secretary Yvette Cooper last week told MPs she would reverse part of the former Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's Illegal Migration Act. The legislation barred anyone arriving in the UK illegally since March 2023 from being granted asylum.